What's good everybody, for those of you guys who are new to my channel, my name is Sydney Baker Green. I'm an international wedding and portrait photographer, cinematographer, and colorist, and one of the things I do here on YouTube is teach people color grading in DaVinci Resolve. And it's been a long time running joke that Premiere Pro's Lumetri Color is a lot like Microsoft Paint due to its lack of functionality, which is what we're going to be focusing on today. I'm not knocking Premiere Pro, uh, well actually I am. We are not focusing on plugins today that will make color grading better in Premiere Pro, because that defeats the purpose of a monthly fee and the $500 you may be spending on a good plugin. And we're all tired of having to pay for the Adobe Suite with the constant crashes and the lackluster updates. So let's go ahead and take a dive into Premiere Pro and see just how bad it is when we try to create the same grade in DaVinci Resolve. All right guys, here we are at the computer set up at Premiere Pro, but first, let us take a look at what all of these images look like graded in DaVinci Resolve. So now that you guys have gotten an idea of what everything looks like graded in DaVinci Resolve, it's time to get color grading in Premiere Pro. And you know, one of the things I've always liked about Premiere Pro is the user interface. I like how it reminds me of Lightroom. However, I do feel like that comes at the cost of functionality. So, you know, it's a two-edged sword. So one of the first things that we need to do when we get started with color grading is get into Rec. 709, right? All these tools are designed to work in Rec. 709 and we should never be grading log footage from its log profile. We need to get a way to get that color space into Rec. 709. So in this particular situation, this is where Premiere Pro gets me, right? It says input LUT which is where it should be in basic corrections, but it's gonna clip all of our highlight data. So you know what, this part is really trash. We don't use that. Just ignore this input LUT area. What you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to create an adjustment layer on top of this in order to actually have the control you wanna have. But what we're gonna do, and the reason I say create an adjustment layer, at least with my style, is because we need to use the creative section to use our Rec. 709 LUT. However, all of the creative LUTs here, and let's just take a look at this, they're all designed for Rec. 709. You see it still looks like it's log? Exactly, because it's supposed to be in Rec. 709. So we're gonna use this section here, but in order to have this open again, we have that adjustment layer on the top. So now when we go ahead and we make our adjustments, again, this is all completely backwards to me. It makes no sense. You see, we still have the sky information there, as we should, as we should, right? All right, so let's just uh, do some basic corrections here. I'm gonna bring down the exposure just a bit. We're gonna adjust that white balance. Everything's very straightforward. I just feel like I don't have a lot of control when I'm working with the image. Like I can get a good base, I get a good base correction, but I can't really create a look. I'm really kind of boxed in here. And so we're gonna bring up these shadows just a bit, right? Because it's a little bit dark. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and relight this. So I'm trying to save the fidelity, the highlight fidelity over here in the sky, which is very, very hard. So I'm gonna increase the shadows here. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back to our curves tool, which is a little bit more powerful. And then I'm gonna bring down that black point to add that contrast back in. And I bump them up just a bit here. So just a quick little bump. That way we have our, our sky at a very nice point and we're not losing too much information there. Now let's go ahead and just increase the saturation. You see now this is looking like a decent image. And then look, before and after, already a good start. Like I said, Premiere Pro is great for getting you to where you need to be to get a presentable image, but you don't have that ability to really create a look, in my opinion, or at least a look with ease, it is possible. So from here, now that I have my base correction, I'm gonna go ahead and just add the film emulation that I want to use, which is the Kodak 5205 right here. Now that we have that added in, let's go back. So you see, I went to the adjustment layer there. We're gonna come back here. I'm just gonna increase that warmth just a little bit. Now, honestly, with what we have, 
available in Premiere Pro. Uh, we're a little bit hopped in on the saturation. With what we have available in Premiere Pro, really here's where we would end up stopping. Actually, let me come back, check this out. We're clipping right here. We're gonna go ahead and add some faded film in here just to get that black level up. Now we're back on track. So what we could do here, if we wanted to attempt to create a look, right? I'm gonna turn off this adjustment layer with what we have going on here. And I'm actually gonna come back and I'm just going to key out the skin tones. I'm gonna do my best here to key out these skin tones. Okay, see, this is my problem. I said key, key the skin tones. Thank you, thank you. All right, so coming in here, pulling up that information. Trying to get as much of it as possible. I don't like how when I let go, it takes away the eyedropper that I have. So I'm getting a lot of that. I know that's a luminance issue. And then I can soften up this bottom portion and it should, it should. No, no, apparently not. There we go. Now we're getting rid of that bottom portion. Okay, so right about here is where I wanna be. Um, we're gonna come out of here. I wanna push this to a little bit more on the teal side. We're going to flip that, there we go. Now my only complaint here is this is kind of what I did in DaVinci Resolve, except I don't have the ability to really go back in and refine this area precisely. I can come into the shadows here and maybe bump it up, but you see we start to lose a little bit of the fidelity of the look that we had here. It still has that slightly teal look that we had going on. And then of course we come back here and turn on what we had here. It's not the same look. We're losing highlight detail. There's really no way to pull it back unless I went in and tried to key out the sky, but that complicates the whole thing. And this is not a tutorial. This is just showing at this point in DaVinci Resolve, I guess my point is I'd be done. So I don't dislike it. It works. It completely works. I mean, it's presentable. You can make this work. I mean, the, the shadows are dirty, but you can make this work. All right, next image. Same thing, come in here. I'm gonna go ahead, add our log C conversion, which is what we need. Come back into the basic corrections. Add in our saturation, definitely gonna add in some contrast, bring down the shadows a bit. Watching that black level right there. Um, good fidelity on the high whites and the whites. Bring those down just a little bit though. We're not clipping, the only thing that's clipping is the, the headlights right here, but those are fine. Now, I'm gonna come into my is it creative? Is this where I want to be? No, this is where I want to be in my color wheels. Hold on. Color wheels. All right. So I want in the midtones, I want it to be, I'm going to add in some orange, which is what I did. And then in the shadows, add in some blue. All right. Let's get a little bit more extreme. We're pushing the outside confines of Rec 709, but I believe this is colored managed, so we should be fine. I am trying my best to get that harsh orange look that I had going on there. All right, I think that that's about it, right? We have neutral shadows. We brought some warmth into the, the ground right here, which is kind of what I wanted. Again, we're gonna come over here into our adjustment layer and then come into creative at our film print, which is what we want, our film emulation. This wouldn't be a film print. All right, so now I guess we're not crushing the shadows. It's a little intense, but I'm not too mad at that. Bring up that black level right there. Gucci. And then, what I'm gonna do here is come back to the HSL secondary. I'm going to do a highlight key or a luminance key. So we're gonna open up all the sections of this. Come on. Thank you. Let's do the whole thing. That's what I want. And then we're coming into just the sky. And then what I wanna do here is I wanna bring down this area. Now I don't have access to the curves tool, which is what I wish I had. I wish I had access to the curves tool here so I could really do something crazy. And, but I can go ahead and in the highlights, bump in that blue that I added in the midtones, add in that orange, and then in the shadows. See, I'm really trying to pull out some of those same colors but without access to my log wheels. It feels like it's killing me. Not my log wheels, actually my HDR wheels. Guess that's about as close as I could get real quick. That's not bad. See, in DaVinci Resolve, like I said, I would be done. This isn't bad, it's not the same. It definitely doesn't have that same feel to it, but it's pretty close. Like I said, the thing with me and Premiere Pro is I feel like I just don't have the same amount of control over the image that I had before. I think this is much more neutral. What I would like to do is really have access to that sky and then again have a separate set of curves for that, so on and so forth. And I could add another Lumetri effect, but again, 
that that's where to me this is a little bit more counterintuitive than it is intuitive i guess from whatever point you're looking at it all right last one let's go ahead and pop on this lut again our lut to get us indirect 709 bring back our information i will say this this did not for me this is not kind of what i was expecting this is a little bit still loggy even though we're in rec 709 i don't know what it is about that 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 adjustment here but let's go ahead and work with what we have we're going to increase our shadows to get that information where we want it and then i'm going to looking at this area here and let's come back to the very beginning right here because this is our darkest area i'm going to bring down our black point I don't want too much of a contrast, right? So bring down that black point, but lift up that level so we have a little bit there. I feel like that gave me just a little bit more contrast kind of in the area I was looking for it in. Increase our saturation. Now the same thing I'm gonna try what I did in Resolve, although we don't have separate nodes, which is in the shadows, we want that warmth coming in here. So right around here. Now I like to have another area instead of shadows just for blacks and dark so I can kind of really neutral this out so it doesn't look unrealistic, but we'll leave it where it is. Um, Midtones, what are we getting in the midtones? Okay, so I kind of want to go on the bluer side. See, that is too much of a trick. There's no transition to me here from that shadows to midtones, right? I wish I could control that level as I did that so that it's not going too deep into the shadows. I guess I could use the curves tool, but wheels are the most intuitive when it comes to color to me. And then I want to increase the, the warmth there. So I guess I'm not getting the sharp look that I want it. Back to creative. Bring in our film emulation. Increase the saturation. This is a good look within and of itself. All right. I'm not mad at this. It's just not what I'm going for. Let me give it the fair shot of coming into the curves tool. The color I was trying to add in was orange. So we need to mix red and yellow together to make orange. So we drop our red curve down, or bring it up actually to add in red in the shadows. We'll add that point, and then we add in yellow, actually opposite direction to make orange. Then we cut that off here. And then we can add in more red because we that's the problem that we're having there. Okay, so that's a little bit closer. So thankfully with my knowledge of color theory, I was able to do that. This is kind of what I was going for. Unfortunately, I do think that I'm losing a lot of the sun here. And this isn't the same look that I had going through. It really only works here. But it's not bad. It's still a presentable look, just not as much control as I was able to have in DaVinci Resolve to really dial it in. And that's the whole point with this, is that to me, Premiere Pro was a great editing program, right? I love it for editing. Color, it gets you to where you need to be. But if you really want complete control over your image, and this depends on person to person and what exactly you're doing with your with your workflow, with your job, if you're a YouTuber, like you may be okay just putting something out there like this, right? But for me, I like having that control over all aspects. And I'm not even really able probably to pull back the sky, even in this case, as I would be in Resolve. It just kind of clips down. So the tools work different. They're not as powerful. They don't work in a linear fashion, which is why I prefer DaVinci Resolve when it comes to color grading. However, editing, kind of miss it sometimes, but I don't miss that monthly fee. And with that, we head right back to the desk. I have to say that I was a lot more pessimistic going into this than what we came out with. I will say that Premiere Pro does at least allow you to get a good solid foundation or a good look so that you can present it to somebody. I do think it's really designed to have an external plugin brought in for color grading. And you know, I think the biggest issue and the reason why I left Premiere Pro was simply because of the fact that, you know, there was crashes, the updates just weren't what they used to be from like CS4 to CS5 to CS6, and then you had to pay monthly for it. And although I still have it because I have all of the Adobe Suite, it just really made me want to take a look at what can you actually do with this outside of editing. I am still happy with my choice to go with DaVinci Resolve. I think Premiere Pro is great for those of you guys who use it and those of you guys who are comfortable with it, but if you really want that functionality, you should hop into a node-based NLE. So with that being said, if you guys like this video, be sure to give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, turn on those post notifications if you have not. Be sure to follow me on my social media, the links are in the description down below, as well as the YouTube fam. Their links are also 
also in the description down below. My beautiful people, if you're ever feeling uninspired, uncreative, or just want to give up on life, remember, every day airplanes take off against the wind. Keep climbing, stay inspired, guys. And as always, stay fabulous. My name is Sydney. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.